a very unusual time in, in history. And when I say that, I'm, I'm not just talking about the pandemic and the Ukraine, but it's also monetary policy and, and uh, fiscal policy. You know, here we are coming off a huge fiscal stimulus. We had a huge monetary stimulus. And now suddenly we're reversing course, right? What, they told us at the Fed that rates were going to be at zero until 2024. All of a sudden, we're going to raise rates. We're going to raise rates aggressively in order to fight inflation. Did and the Fed screw up? I think so. I mean, they definitely overdid it uh, in terms of uh, supporting fiscal spending by buying all these bonds. And now, look, we've done this before. We did this during the Second World War. And so now we're coming out of this phase but unlike what we did at the end of the Second World War, where we just said, OK, fine, we're going to turn off the printing press now and let's let inflation run its course and come back to neutral, uh, we're, we're aggressively fighting it. Yeah. So, for instance, in 1946, inflation went to 20 percent, right? By 1949, we were in deflation. They didn't, they didn't tighten. They just stopped printing money. But we know what caused 46. What, there's a huge debate, argument, fight. It's very political. It's very charged. What is there one primary cause of the inflation we're seeing today, or is it just a confluence of a number of things? Well, look, in, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Easy, Milton. Yes, just print money and you'll get inflation. All right. But the thing here is we ran into bottlenecks. Right now, in a normal course, if we hadn't had all the money printing, there would be demand destruction that would offset the price increases yeah. in other categories. We're starting to see that right now. But, you know, because the Fed has been so accommodative, we, we've had to readjust the price level to a higher level. We're never going to take that back. We are now permanently at a higher price level. Yeah. So trying to think that we're going to somehow reverse all of this and go back to where we were, it is not going to happen. But I guess what I'm – listen, people think of you as a bond guy, but you, you're, a, you're an everything guy. You invest in equities as well. You have to. Global CIO. Yeah. We have stocks that are down 75 percent from five months ago. Right. What's going on with equities? Well, I think – I mean, look, I think the, stock, the stocks fall into a number of buckets, right? For instance, Peloton. Right, which was a stock that everybody thought was the darling of the pandemic. And now that we're back to able to go out to work out in a gym, you know, it's not as attractive anymore. Yeah. Right? So some of these things are destined to unwind. But then we have situations like home builders and we have huge spike in interest rates. Uh, you know, the worst bear market in bonds on record that anybody can remember. And so we've had this massive increase in mortgages. And we're seeing home builders come down, and you have home builders trading at six times earnings. Are you buying them? Well, yes, we're along the, the home builders index. And the, the point I'm trying to make here is, is that, you know, the demand for houses isn't going away. The, the prices are up, lumber prices are coming down, you know, we're getting demand destruction. Yeah. We're getting exactly what should be happening if you stop printing money. My concern is that the Fed not is not just stopped printing money, but they've they've slammed on the brakes and they're throwing it the car into reverse, right at a time when we're starting to see demand destruction happen and we're starting to see prices begin to plateau and start to decelerate. What should they do then? Well, I think we got a Fed meeting coming up on Wednesday. Everybody right. expects at least a half a percent. I'm not going to say basis point. Right. They could do three quarters of a percent. Right. What should they do? And more importantly, what guidance right. should they give us if you were running the show? Well, the first thing I would do is I would get rid of the idea of pegging interest rates. This idea that they set an overnight rate, that was what we did in the 1970s that allowed inflation to go out and spiral out of control. When Volcker came in, Volcker got rid of this pegging of interest rates, and he looked at the supply of money, right? What they need to do is focus on the supply of money and the balance sheet. Let the market determine what the right equilibrium rate is. And so just say, we're going to, we're going to stop printing money. We're going to slowly reduce the size of the balance sheet. And without money, without the growth of money there to, to fuel the flames, we're taking, we're taking the fuel away from the fire and eventually, you know, prices will But in will some ways, aren't we trusting, <clears throat> there's a bunch of different Fed members, and I'm not trying right. to cast too much blame because there was a lot of things, but 
We're trusting the people who helped get us into this to now get us out of this. Look, I, I once said to Bill Dudley, who was president of the New York Fed at the time, the central bank is the source of and solution to every crisis, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we got here because of the Fed. And now I, I think we're running the risk that we're going to create another crisis. Are we? Oh, we're definitely on path. What kind? Is it going to be a credit event? What, what, well, the first what thing, is different between now and 2008? Because 2008, we'd always CLOs, CDOs, yeah, yeah, crazy was, derivative. Right. This is not then. No, that's right. But that's the market, not. the stock market is falling faster now than it did then. Right. Well, I mean, look, I think Mohammed Alarian put his finger on this. Right now, because the Fed is, is withdrawing liquidity, right? The, 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 if you look at a number like M2, which I money know is there, a really money, money, money supply, supply. Yep. it's actually contracted over the last three months. Okay, we've, we've had this massive run up in prices. So, you know, as we take liquidity out of the system, markets are becoming illiquid. You know, you see treasury rates move around by a quarter to half a percent on a daily basis. That is a liquidity problem, right? And I believe Muhammad is right, which is a liquidity problem has a way of turning itself into a credit problem, and a credit problem has a way of turning itself into a general financial problem. So will it? If we don't stop what we're, the course we're on, I believe we will, yes. So do you think that we've seen the peak of 10-year yields this year? Uh, I think we probably have. I mean, I'll look, I know I, you I, were in the lower yield yep, camp. I was, I was uh, look, I thought two and a half was going to be the peak. Uh, you know, we've overshot that level. Uh, but we could come back to it? Oh, easily. And, you know, one thing, Brian, we, I have to go. If we go. get another negative, if we <clears> get a, <throat> a negative GDP print for the second quarter. Right. Technically, that's a recession, although we can dither right. over the definition of a recession with the NBER, et cetera. Right. Could the Fed reverse the reversal? <laughs> Well, that's and the, see rates come down? Well, that's that's really the what The dollar I'm, fall? Honestly, that's what I'm actually the most concerned about. I'm afraid that if the Fed sees the economy to begin to stall, that they'll, they'll reverse course just like they did in 2018, and then all of a sudden they will lose all credibility as an inflation fighter.